By the end of this video, you will have a scene set up with a player, some ground, and a background. And if we hit play, we will also have some basic physics and collisions. To get started, we first need to download Unity. If you already have it downloaded and installed, feel free to skip this part. Let's go to Google and type download Unity. Then we can go to the first search result, press this button that says download, and download Unity Hub somewhere onto our computer. After it's downloaded and installed, you should see a window like this once you open it up. Although you will not have anything here, this will just be an empty list for you. We can go here to installs, and then we can press install editor. Here we can pick the latest LTS release. Right now it's 2022.3.50 F1 and you can just hit install. Once that's done you can press new project and up here you can see the editor version we're using. For this course I will be using 2022.3.21 F1 and if you do want to use this exact same version you can go to Google, type Unity Download Archive, click the first link and then you can go into here to 2022, press Control F and type the version 2022.3.21 one f1 and here we go and then i would just hit install on that one but as long as you're using any version newer than this one that should be fine back to here you can pick 2d built-in render pipeline and then go over here give the project a name in this case i'm just going to call it tutorials then you can go ahead and pick a location that you're going to install this to. I've already created this project, so it's just giving me a little error here. And then just leave this as blank, and you can uncheck this box that says Connect to Unity Cloud. Once you have this done with a unique name, you can go ahead and hit Create Project. Once Unity has opened, it should look a little something like this. If it looks smaller on your screen, that might be because I've scaled my Unity up by going to Edit, preferences and setting a custom scaling value under UI scaling to 150% and I've just done that so you can more easily see my screen during recording. But for most parts you probably just want to leave this at 100%. Also if your view looks different than this you can go to layout and press reset all layouts and then hit continue. Finally if you see this curved line here this is your horizon and if you see a curved line, it means we're using a perspective camera. What you can do is click on the main camera under sample scene, go to projection and change this from perspective to orthographic, which makes the line flat. And then under clear flags, you can change this from skybox to a solid color. And then you can pick any background color you want for the game we're going to be making. Other than that, let's go ahead and get started. Let's add a floor by clicking with the right mouse button, going to 2D object, sprites, and selecting a square. It didn't put it in the center of the screen, which I don't like, so I'm going to click these three dots here and press reset to reset its position X, Y, and Z to 0, 0, 0. Now I'm going to hold mouse over the Y and drag it down so it's closer to the bottom of the screen. And I'll just set that to minus 4. And then I'll scale its X up to, mm, let's say, 25. And its Y up to 4 to make it a little bit bigger. Maybe that's too big. 2 sounds good. And then I'll change its color to a dark blue. Finally, I'll right click and I'll create another 2D object. This one will be a capsule which will represent our player. And I can actually just name that player. And I can even go back and rename this one to be floor. Click on our player and once again I'll reset its position and now we have a player in the scene. If things look a little bit blurry that's because I have this scale up to one and a half times just so it's a little bit bigger for recording but on your screen this should be set to 1.0. I'll also just give my player a different color so maybe a dark red in this case. Now while this is a great start all we've really done at this point is added some basic shapes into our scene and that's not quite enough to make a game. So next, let's venture into the Unity Asset Store where we can find and download some assets and sprites we can use to make our game playable. To do this, I can go to Google and type Unity Asset Store, which already shows up in my search history, and then I can click on the first link to go to the Unity Asset Store. Because this is a 2D game, I'll click over here for 2D, and then I can scroll down and go to Shop Assets, which will give us some further options. Next, we're going to look for some free assets, so I'm just going to click here and 
on the filters and select free. This will immediately give us a few options. And there's a few coming up here that say purchased for me, which just indicate that I've already added this to my collection in the past. But we can see that this Pixel Adventure one is free. So I'll go ahead and click on this and you can do the same or you can use something else or even better, something that you design yourself. But if you have not already gotten this, you'll see a button here that does not say open in Unity, but perhaps purchase or download or add to my assets. You can go ahead and click that and then it may ask you to log in. After you do, you can say open in Unity and that will take you to the package manager in Unity. Right now, I'm seeing a list of all the assets that I already have, but if you are not on this view, you can click on this drop down list here and just make sure it says my assets, not Unity registry or in project, but my assets. Assets. With Pixel Adventure 1 selected, I've already downloaded this, so I don't have a download button here, but you might. Once you click download and hit import, and this will open up a new window with all of the files in this pack. I'm just going to go ahead here and click import, and that's going to download this into my Unity project. I can see this is already populated down here. Let's click back on the scene view, actually maybe the game view, so we can see what we're doing. And under Pixel Adventure, I'm going to take a look for something we can replace the floor with. Terrain looks like a good bet. Now, if if I were to click on this first one and click this little arrow, I'm going to see that it expands into one giant set of tiles. If I do the same on this second one, it's already split up into a bunch of individual tiles that we can use because the creator of this asset pack was nice enough to do that for us already. But I should still show you how to do this on your own, especially if you're using something else that maybe doesn't have it set up this way. So if I click on this first one over here, I can see on the right side under the inspector view, we have sprite mode set to single. I'll go ahead and change this to multiple, then I'll scroll down and hit apply. Now the arrow has disappeared altogether. If I go back up here into the inspector and hit sprite editor, we now have the option to slice these individually. If I click slice, I can pick the type of slicing I want. Now, if I was to choose automatic, it wouldn't do a very good job here because these are all individual tiles. So for instance, we want to have this middle grass as its own tile, this top left grass as its own tile, and this top right grass as its own tile. Just to show you, if I click slice and do automatic, it's going to automatically turn all of this into one individual asset that we could use. So I'm going to hit revert. Now, one thing we can notice is that it says up here, this is a 16 by 16 terrain. If I go to slice, change type to grid by cell size, I can set the pixel size to 16 by 16 and then hit slice. Now it's gone ahead and sliced all of these into individual tiles that we can use. If I hit apply, I would see that now this one here looks exactly the same as this one over here. At this point, these two are exactly the same and it no longer matters which one I use. I'll go ahead and click on the floor and over here where it says square, I'll go into this one and I'll go ahead and pick a tile that looks like it's the middle top grass, which seems to be this guy over here. I'll click it and drag it over into the square and we can see that a couple of things have happened. Immediately it's gotten a lot smaller and a lot darker. To fix the coloring issue, I no longer want to use this dark blue color so I'll just click on it and reset it to a white so we can see it properly. I'll also move it up and we can see that it looks weird and stretched. Well that makes sense because our scaling is 25 by 2. Let's change that to 1 by 1. But now it's tiny. That's because by default this has a pixels per unit of 100 and this terrain is set to 16 by 16. Let's change the pixels per unit to 16 and go here and hit apply. There we go. Now it looks like it's a normal size. Now I want this floor to take up the entire width of the screen. You might be thinking that I could go ahead here and drag in multiple floor pieces and then position them automatically which technically would work, but it would take a lot of setup and it would just be a very inefficient way of doing things. So I'll delete this tile over here. And if I click back on this, well, I'm not gonna hit stretch either because look what that's gonna do. It's gonna make it look terrible. But what I can do is I can change this draw mode here from simple to tiled. And now I can just increase the width and like magic, it just tiles automatically and looks great. I'll set it to 22. And to fix this warning that's coming up, I'll go ahead and I'll click on this asset and then I'll change the mesh type from tight to full rect. And just for good measure, I'll also change the wrap mode from clamp to repeat and then hit apply. Now, if I look at my floor, the warning is gone and it works just fine. As for the player, we can go into the main characters folder and take a look at what is provided. I'm just gonna take a look at this virtual guy here. And uh, we have here an idle animation, which sounds like a good starting point. So I'm gonna click on our player. It's already been pre-sliced for us. So I'm going to drag this 
idle 01 into the capsule and we can see the same problem has happened here. So I'm going to adjust the color, make it white, and then I'm going to just mass select all of these and change its pixels per unit to 15 to match the floor and hit apply. And just like that, our player is now a decent size. Now, if I was to hit play, nothing is really going to happen. And that's because we haven't added any physics or any collisions to our player or our ground. I'm going to unhit play, select the player, and scroll down here to the inspector view and say add component and I'm going to type rigid body 2D. I'm going to add a rigid body 2D component to the player, which essentially enables the player to have physics such as gravity. Now, if I were to hit play, the player immediately falls and he falls through the world, which is better, but obviously not ideal. To fix this, I'm going to add another component to the player, and this is going to be a capsule collider 2D, which is going to allow the player to have physics collisions. In order for it to collide with the floor, I'm going to click on the floor add component and add a box collider 2d now if I was to immediately hit play we're already going to see an effect and just like that the player is now colliding with the ground if the player is not colliding exactly at the level I want I can click on the player go to the scene view and edit his capsule collider to make it align more with the floor I can use mouse wheel to zoom in drag this point down and just like that that's actually the wrong way. I want it to be a little closer. It looks pretty good, honestly. I don't need to do too much here, but I may want to shrink its sides to make it more aligned with the sprite and then bring its top down to make it more aligned with the top. Now, if I was to unhit play, these changes will not save because any changes we make while the game is playing do not save. But I do like the way that this capsule collider is set up. So I'm just going to click on these three dots here on the capsule collider, say copy component, unhit play. If I go back to the scene view, we will see that indeed the capsule collider has reset. But now if I hit these three dots again, I can say paste component values and it will go back to what I set it to in play mode. I'm now going to hit control S to save. And I think this scene is in a pretty good place for this first part. One of the final things we should do is press Control S to save or go to file and save, which it will ask us to save our scene somewhere. If you don't have a scenes folder, you can go ahead and create one. I'm recording this at a later point, so you can see I have multiple folders here, uh, but you can just go into a scenes folder, give it a name such as game scene, and then press enter and it will be saved. In the next video, we will be adding some basic player movement that works with both a keyboard or a plugged-in controller. See you there.